In this lesson, I'll show you two examples on how to solve combined variation application problems. This is part one. The question reads, the intensity of illumination at a given point is directly proportional to the intensity of light source and inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the light source. If a desk is properly illuminated by a 75 watt lamp eight feet from the desk, what size lamp will be needed to provide the same lighting at a distance of 12 feet? The first thing that you have to do is assign letters for each of these variables. The dependent variable here is the intensity of illumination, and it depends on two things. It depends on the intensity of the light and the distance. So let's go ahead and assign a letter for each of these. I'll call the intensity of illumination I. So I have I is equal to the intensity. I'll call the intensity of the light source L. And finally, I'll call the distance d. It's very important that you assign letters for your variables, especially if they're not given to you. Now, let's reread the question and this time create an equation from it. The intensity of illumination, I, at a given point is directly proportional, don't forget your constant of variation, to the intensity of the light source, L, and inversely proportional divided by the square of the distance, so d squared. Now that we have our equation, we can start to fill in the blanks. If a desk is properly illuminated by a 75 watt lamp eight feet away, so let's write that down, 75 is equal to L and D is equal to eight. What size lamp is needed to provide the same lighting if we further the distance to 12 feet? So in our second scenario, we're changing D to 12, but we don't know L, and I is remaining consistent in both situations. Here's what to do next. What I'll do is set up two equations. One equation that represents the before conditions, and the second equation will represent distance at 12. So here's the first equation. We have the intensity of illumination is equal to K times 75 divided by 8 to the power of 2 is 64. And the second equation will also be I is equal to K. And this time we don't know the light source, and that's what we're looking for, so I'll leave it as L, is equal to the distance of 12 to the power of 2, which is 144. Now because we have two equations and both have the variable I, we can set this part of each equation equal to each other. Here's what happens if you do that. We have 75K over 64 is equal to KL over 144. All I have to do from here is solve for L. How do we do that? Well, you'll notice that there's one term on the left side and one term on the right side, and there's a K on both sides. This means that we can cancel out the Ks, and in case you're curious as to why, pretend we divided both sides by K. The Ks would cancel out. This leaves us with 75 over 64 is equal to L over 144. This is a simple cross multiplication problem now. We cross multiply where I have 144 times 75, I'll do my work over here. Now, finding the product of this and then dividing by 64 gives us the light source strength. 144 times 75 divided by 64 gives us 168.75. Now if we want to be consistent with the correct number of significant figures, we had three significant figures here, three here, and three here. So our final answer should also have three. Therefore, we can round our answer to 169 watts. Let's put this in perspective. If you back off four feet more from the original spot and you still want to light up the same amount of space at the same intensity, you have to increase the power of the light source to 169 watts from the original 75 to get the same effect. Let's move on to question two. In question two, the power available in a jet of liquid is directly proportional to the cross-sectional area of the jet and to the cube of the velocity. 
by what factor will the power increase if the area and the velocity are both increased 50%? I want to start answering this question off by having a discussion on what jet of liquid means. Pretend that we are squirting some water out of a water bottle. The water that comes out of the water bottle, let's say we're squeezing the water bottle and water's coming out. If we take a cross section of the water that's coming out, you're going to get a circle. They're telling us that the power available in a jet of liquid is directly proportional, so I'll say P for power is directly proportional to the cross sectional area of the jet, and I'll call the area A, and directly proportional to the cube of the velocity. Let's call velocity V to the power of 3. They're saying by what factor will the power increase if the area and velocity are increased by 50%. So area has been increased by 50%. We represent that as 1.5 of the original A. And V is equal to 1.5 of the original V. And in case you're curious as to why it's 1.5, what I did is I converted this to a decimal. It's 0 0.50. And since it's being increased, we keep the original quantity and we add 0 0.50 to the original quantity, and that's why we have 1.50. So whenever you see an increase, it's always 1 plus the percentage increase. I'll substitute these values into my equation, and instead of p, I'll write down p prime, the change in p, is equal to k times 1.5a, and we'll replace v with 1.5v to the power of 3. We'll distribute this 3 to the 1.5, and Multiply 1.5 to 1.5 to the power of 3. Using our calculator, this gives us approximately 5.0625. K 5.0625 AV to the power of 3. Remember, this 3 is distributed to the V as well. And notice that K, A, and V to the power of 3 multiplied together is the original P value. So, by increasing the area and velocity by 1.5 of their original, the change in P is nearly 5.1, I've rounded this up, the original P value. And there you have it. Two examples on how to solve combined variation application problems. Make sure that if you don't understand this, that you watch part two for more examples.